2023 has been a year full of extra surprises and comeback stories, so much so that I want to do something a bit different this time around and spotlight eight women who made significant strides in the rankings this season. Some of these ladies demonstrated true resilience, bouncing back strongly from injury layoffs while others experienced breakthrough seasons and are poised for greater achievements in 2024. Starting us off at number 8 is Anastasia Pavlyuchenkova. At 32, Pavlyuchenkova is the oldest woman on this list and she's a certified veteran on the tour. 2021 was Anastasia's best season to date as she reached her maiden major final at Roland Garros, which brought her to a career high of number 11. On the flip side, 2021 was probably one of her toughest years on tour. She only played 5 matches total that year, ending it early due to an ongoing knee injury. Pavlia Chengova returned to the tour at the start of the new year after a 7 month layoff. She began her year ranked 367th and fell outside the top 800 after losing first round at the Australian Open, love and won to Camila Georgi. It took Pav some time to get her groove back as she didn't get her first tour level main draw win until April. The Russian truly hit her stride at Roland Garros where she scored 2 top 25 wins en route to her 3rd career quarterfinal in Paris. Despite missing the Wimbledon Championship and falling early at the US Open, Pavlyuchenkova re-entered the top 60 with some strong showings during the Asian swing where she scored three additional top 25 wins. As we'll see with other players on this list, this was a classic case of a solid player bouncing back well after suffering an injury layoff the year prior. I anticipate Pavlyuchenkova returning back inside the top 25 in no time. Taking the 7th spot is American Sofia Kennan. Some people might have forgotten this, but Kennan was awarded WTA Player of the Year just 3 years ago due to her standout 2020 season. That year she claimed her maiden slam title at the Australian Open before finishing runner up at Roland Garros. Kennan unfortunately suffered a fall from grace the following years, dealing with multiple health concerns coupled with random and explicable hiatuses. In 2022, Kennan earned only 4 main draw tour level wins and suffered a 9 match losing streak. She made the wise decision to drop back and play ITFs and WTA 125s towards the end of that season, and that got her some more match wins and much needed confidence. Transitioning to 2023, we saw nothing truly spectacular from Kennan from the first 3 quarters of the year as she rarely went deep in tournaments. She nabbed some good wins over world number 2 Sabalenka in Rome before upsetting compatriot Coco Gauff at Wimbledon in one of the matches of the year. Kennan's momentum from that Wimbledon run was stalled due to injury as she had to take two months off from the tour. She came back strong though and made the San Diego 500 finals before making the Guadalajara 1000 semifinals. Those results propelled Kennan back inside the top 30 before ending the year 3 spots lower. I knew it was only a matter of time before Sonia started to move back up the rankings. She's a Grand Slam champion for a reason. She just needed some more time to get her groove back. Getting those wins on the lower level ITF circuit was foundational for her success over Sabalenka and Golf. Those wins helped boost her confidence tremendously, which was her biggest issue. There's still some work that needs to be done if Kennan wants to return to her top form, but I think that if she can grab a seat spot for Melbourne and make a deep run there or another tournament, big tournament, she'll be well on her way. I predict that we'll see her back inside the top 15 at some point next year. Taking the 6th spot is another American, 22 year old Peyton Stearns, who rose 160 spots from 209 to 49 by the end of the year. Unlike the previous 2 women on the countdown, Stearns' rise this season was a direct byproduct of her gains on the ITF circuit. Peyton only committed full time on the Pro Tour in 2022, right after she won the NCAA Singles Championship. Stearns earned 2 ITF trophies at the end of 2022 and earned 2 more at the start of 2023. Her rise in the rankings got her entry into more main level tournaments including the Bocata Open where she reached her first tour final. Stearns though truly made big strides at the majors this year, first reaching the third round at Roland Garros where she beat former champ Ostapenko en route. Then she made her first slam second week at the US Open, pushing Wimby champ Vondrasova to the brink. Peyton reached her career high of 43 after the Open and I think she'll eclipse that in 2024 as she continues to adjust to the rigors of the tour. At 5 is another NCAA champion, Emma Navarro. Navarro's been around a bit longer than Stearns as she won her national title in 2021. Navarro's been referred to as a tennis industry plant by a few people as her parents do own the Charleston 500 tournament where she made her WTA Tour main draw debut back in 2019. Y'all can call her an industry plant all you want but I think 
think a more fitting title is the undisputed queen of the ITF circuit. She won five ITF titles in 2023, which shot her ranking up from 143 in the world to 32. I truly am astounded by how Navarro has put herself in position to be seated for the Australian Open by primarily playing these ITFs. The 22-year-old barely played women ranked inside the top 50 this whole year. She only beat three women in the top 65, but she did get good wins over Maria Sakri and Madison Keys. Navarro only had one standout WTA Tour result this season, which was when she reached the San Diego semifinals. Now, I hate to be such a negative ninny, but I honestly don't expect that much from Navarro next year because with her ranking being so high right now, she's going to have to start leaving those ITFs alone. It's going to be a big transition going from primarily facing players outside the top 100 to these top women. Peyton Stearns is ranked lower than Navarro right now, but she has much more experience at the higher echelons on the tour. I don't expect Navarro to climb much higher than her current career high ranking of 32 in 2024. 16-year-old phenom Mira Andreeva is not only the youngest player on this list, but she also made the biggest jump in the rankings. Andreeva shot up from 405 at the start of the year and is currently sitting at 57. Mira primarily played ITF tournaments in 2022 and only made her WTA Tour main draw debut that October at the Jasmine Open. Andreeva started her 2023 on the junior circuit, finishing runner-up at the Australian Open girls event. After that, Mira said she was ready to hang with the big girls and devoted more time playing low-level pro tournaments. The clay season is when Andreeva had her first breakthrough. She won back-to-back -back ITF 60K tournaments before earning her first two top 20 wins at the Madrid 1000. Soon after, she qualified for both Roland Garros and Wimbledon, making the third round and round of 16 respectively at those two tournaments. Toward the end of the season, Andreeva made her second 1000 round of 16 showing at the China Open, earning her fourth top 20 win after beating Barbara Kritikova. We honestly didn't see that much from Andreeva outside of the majors and a couple of other events, as the Russian was restricted by the age eligibility rule and could only play a handful of tournaments. Once Andreeva turns 17 in April, she will be allowed to compete in more events, which will only help build up that ranking even more. With her talent and high tennis IQ, I'd be surprised if Mira wasn't to see it in at least one major next year. Our third player, Marketa Vandrasova, seems to enjoy the odd years when you consider all her major milestones. In 2019, she was Roland Garros runner-up. In 2021, she earned the silver medal at the Tokyo Olympics. And then two years after that, 2023, she had her best year on tour by far. Vandrasova began the year ranked just inside the top 100 at 99, as she was still on the comeback trail from undergoing wrist surgery in May 2022. Marketa earned a couple of edgy wins over Ange Jabeur at the start of the year and made the round of 16 at a few 1,000 tournaments, but aside from that, she didn't do anything spectacular. That was until the Wimbledon Championships, where she kind of came out of nowhere, becoming the first unseated woman singles champion. Vondrasova's run was really impressive too, as she took down five seeded players en route to her maiden slam title. The Czech then followed that up with a quarterfinal showing at the US Open, which propelled her to a career high of number six in the world. Marquette's Wimbledon win was really not a huge shock. She was always talented, but just struggled with some injuries that stunted her growth. Now, I would be surprised if she nabbed another slam next year because she kind of does give me one slam wonder vibes, but a new career high ranking is definitely possible. The penultimate player here is Alina Svinalina, who jumped 208 spots from outside the top 230 to inside the top 25. After a year layoff, Svinalina returned to the tour in April after giving birth to her daughter Sky in October 2022. Svinalina played some ITFs and 125s in the early part of the clay season and her game clicked very fast. The Ukrainian won her first title postpartum at the Strasbourg Open, causing her ranking to skyrocket from 508 to 192. Alina carried that momentum into Roland and Garros, where she reached the quarterfinals. She then used that momentum from that run to carry her into the Final Four at SW19, beating world number one Igor Svantec in the process. There's no denying, Alina Svitolina is an accomplished player. She was ranked as highest number three in the world, and she won the WTA Finals back in 2018. But many considered her form this year to be the best in her entire career. Alina played with a new sort of aggression and moxie that was missing from her game for a long time. Rather than being more of a passive counterpuncher, 
Spinelina stepped up to the baseline and beat her opponents to the punch, oftentimes overpowering them. Alina isn't defending any points until May either, so the first part of the season will be a prompt opportunity for her to rise even higher in the ranks. I can see her make a return back inside the top 10 in 2024. Now before I reveal the number one player on this list, I want to highlight some other women who made significant gains in 2023. China's Zhu Lin improved from 62 at the start of the year to 38 by its conclusion and attained a career high singles ranking of 31 midway through the year. Jasmine Paolini jumped from 59 to 30, sitting just below her career high of 29. And then Princess Diana Schneider enjoyed a successful transition from collegiate tennis to the big leagues, shooting up from 182 to a career high of 60. And finally, my most improved player of the year is none other than Karolina Mukova. The 27-year-old Czech has struggled with injuries the past couple of years, which is why she started the season ranked outside the top 140. 2022 was kind of a nightmare for Mukova due to various ailments. She was ranked as low as 235 that year. The key for Mukova in 2023 was remaining healthy so she could build on her form week in and week out. Carolina lost many tight early round matches to start the year, but she found her footing in the spring when she reached back to back 1,000 quarterfinals at Dubai and then Indian Wells. Mukova nearly accomplished the same feat as her countrywoman Vondrasova when she stormed through the field at Roland Garros unseated, narrowly falling in the finals to Iga Swiatek. The Czech still ended the year on a high, reaching the Cincinnati 1000 finals before making the Final Four in Flushing. Unfortunately, she was forced to end her season early after the US Open, sustaining a wrist injury that sidelined her from the WTA Finals. As I mentioned before, Mukova always had the talent, but she was just unlucky due to her being so injury prone. If her body didn't betray her all the time, she'd for sure be a mainstay inside the top 10. Hopefully that wrist is all healed up for the new year in the Australian Open, because the Czech can definitely be a threat there. She made the Final Four in Melbourne back in 2021 and can go all the way if she plays her cards right. That's all for my countdown, and let me know in the comments if you agree with my rankings. Feel free to comment below too if you feel that there were other players that should have made the lineup. Also, make sure y'all subscribe and click the notification bell so you're notified whenever I post new content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all next time here on Grand Slam Tennis News Today.